Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, for starters, I would like to welcome all of you to Heal Talk Tuesdays. And uh, for the ones who do not know me, I would like to take this moment and introduce myself. My name is Lisa Bubari, and uh, what I do as career-wise uh, is I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and I help you heal within. What does heal within mean, right? Anything that we have a pain, we have a hurt, and we need to shift from the inside out is healing within. And it could be emotional, it could be physical, it could be mental. And uh, the name of my business is Heal Within because we do mind-body therapy. How I got into this line of business is I healed myself. I healed an ovarian cyst that I had through hypnotherapy, and that was over 17 years ago. And uh, I changed my line of career from being in the legal field to the health and wellness. And it's because of that that this Heal Within has been created. And every week I come to you to heal a part, to heal something, or help you overcome an aspect, a habit, a behavior that you may have, and uh, reach out to you and see how I might and how I may be able to help you, guide you, coach you, and uh, so that the healing within starts from the inside. Because that's what all healing is. Um, no matter what we fix from the outside, the main thing is how do we feel inside. So today's session is what traumatic thing has happened to you that you can think of from childhood or a young age that... It could be a fear, it could be an experience that has affected you to this day. Why did I come up with this one? Is because I was talking to one of my clients and uh, the discussion came to being a little boy and something traumatic that had happened to him. And this is a few days ago we were talking. But then I went to a seminar, and it was a community seminar. And as I am sitting there, the main speaker, who was a doctor, talked about ACE, which is this childhood trauma that happens. And it affects each one of us in our adulthood. Well, of course. Um, but how we hold on to some of those effects and traumas, and because it had a significant effect on us, we hold on to the emotional aspect of this. So let me give you an example. This client of mine that I was talking to you about, let's call him Brian, that's, his not, that's not his name, but we'll call him Brian. So Brian comes to me because he is smoking a lot. He's smoking two and a half packs, and he's also drinking. But that's not what he came for. He came in because his girlfriend told him, uh, I would like you to stop smoking because they're thinking of getting married and she wants to get pregnant and have a life and to her is two and a half packs is too much he's thinking of 
okay, it's about my health, it's my body, but I also want to do something good for myself, for my future. So here's the underlying aspect of it. She feels fear that if something happens to him, what's my future going to look like? And this is not communicated. But what it is, is having him go and quit smoking. And that the reason he came in is because of the anxiety in their relationship, the stress that they had, and the arguments that they were having. Now, by doing, by taking this and deciphering what the argument was about, how he feels, what she thinks, what she feels, we got to understand that she fears his health and him not being there as they are moving forward in life, in their relationship, in their marriage. And what he was feeling is she's already telling me what to do, even though it's about my health, but I've been a smoker for so many years. Once we got one thing taken care of, and the thing was, are you ready to stop smoking? You see, next week is the America smoke out or national smoke out. And he said, every year he quits smoking for one day on national smoke out. Wow, what a great segue. But understanding why you want to become healthy. Not because you want to quit smoking, but why do you want to become healthier? Is it only for her and the marriage and the relationship and the future baby? Or what is the cigarette doing for you, giving to you? And how do you feel by having that cigarette? And that is what we started working on. What I do is hypnotherapy. What I do, the tool I use is hypnosis, which is delving deeper into our subconscious mind where it has all the information from the day that we start a habit, why we pick up a habit, what that habit does for us because there is nothing that does to us but for us. So it was me asking him the same questions. What does one cigarette do for you? Because I know all about smoking. I used to be a smoker. I understand the implication of the emotional connection to the cigarette, the mental connection to the cigarette, that when I feel tired, I have a smoke. When I'm stressed, I have a smoke. When I'm emotional, I have a smoke. And the cigarette is with me everywhere I go, right? I have total control over this cigarette. Total control over this pack. It gives us a sense of control. For him to have a control for two and a half packs a day, is he in control? Is he in control of his emotions? And those are the questions we started asking. Are you in total control of your emotions? So when you feel sad, do you feel the sadness? Or do you numb your sadness? So when you're stressed, do you feel the stress and what you're going to do to overcome that stress or do you numb your stress by having another cigarette or two or three or four when you want to be alone and relax do you numb the feeling the pain or the anxiety or the argument with another cigarette and he had never looked at a cigarette that way but then let's Take him and see where he started, why he started smoking. And it was not at the time that it was in high school, peer pressure or anything. He started smoking only, only 11 years before. Now, you see, when someone starts smoking so 
um, a long time um, later in their years. And it's not at teen years about peer pressure, looking good, feeling accepted, belonging. Then I look for the causes of that. And his was when his cousin was murdered. That's a, an incredible traumatic experience. So it's the traumatic experience. And because he, he was at home and the family was there, all his friends, they go outside. They're all standing outside talking about what happened. One of his friends was smoking and he just picked up that cigarette. 11 years and he is 37 years old. Something traumatic that happens to us affects us. And that cigarette became his numbing of that feeling of that time. And since then, every time there was something that was painful, hurtful, that he did not know how to cope with it, he would smoke. And he got to a point that after a while, cigarette became this habitual thing, not realizing where it started. So it was quite easy for us once he got to understand where it stemmed from, why he picked it up, how he numbed his feelings, his hurt, his pain of losing his cousin, and he couldn't do anything about it. It was easier for him to say, wow, I never knew. I didn't realize what I was doing. So in effect, it's a behavior and emotional. And I have realized so much of our negative things, I call them negative things, smoking, cheating, eating, overeating, gambling. And the destructive INGs, the destructive things that we have, instead of exercising, swimming, dancing, that brings joy and in itself creates this happy endorphins in our body. When we have the other one, even though it is negative, it's still giving him that support. And all this time, he thought it was a control issue. It was a, uh, a, a just a habit that he could not break. And in two sessions, he has stopped smoking. And I call it stopped smoking because it is a choice. It is a decision to stop. Why are words so important? Is because when we say, I am ready to quit, and there is in the back of our mind for years and years from mentors, from teachers, from parents, from everywhere, we are told that we are not quitters and we have to keep on going. And it's like, never say never, right? And keep at it until you succeed. You're not a quitter. So how can we quit smoking? How can we quit doing anything? We stop. So he has stopped and I congratulate him. And it's been only a few days, but just a week ago, I had another client of mine who yelped about him becoming a non-smoker in three sessions. And he never even believed it would happen and understanding why he was smoking. You see, my dear tribe, my dear followers, viewers, Hello to all of you. I see all of you here. So many of the habits we have and we have picked on. The things we do to ourselves. It's never doing to ourselves, but it is doing for us. 
And it doesn't matter if it's good, bad, right, wrong, black, white. It doesn't matter. They all serve something that helps us feel good from the inside. And if you believe that you happen to have a fear, a habit, a behavior, either this or this, and it doesn't matter if it's this. Those ings that we pick up that no longer serve us. And it could be fears from, I just saw something on the internet just a few days, just yesterday. And it was those girls, two little kids in Cambodia that they go and this one little girl, literally, hunts is hunting after snakes and she's like a snake catcher and the and the other girl puts it this big huge snake on her body i don't know if you saw it or not and it's just mesmerizing and i was like mesmerized in watching how she does it going with that stick and the snake coming up even talking about it, some people who have fear of snake will have this phobic reaction, right? In the past, I used to have that same phobic reaction. And here's another thing I can say and share for you to understand. Uh, my, my God, about 15 years ago, I was uh, in Marino del Rey, which is near the beach side, the ocean side here um, where I live. And I was standing, um, it's all beach and everybody summertime in their bikinis and shorts. So I'm as I'm standing with my friend and her daughter and son, younger son, they looked and she was taken back. And my back, I didn't see what it was because she was looking behind me. And I was ready to order our hamburgers and everything for us. And she took a few steps back, pulled her children back, and she was like, oh. and as I turned around, I saw this guy, handsome-looking guy, with the big, huge snake around his neck and chest, and the snake was just crawled and, you know, just staying on his chest. Oh. What would you do at that very moment? You know what I did? I screamed. I screamed so loud that it was, you would think it was the biggest drastic, traumatic thing that has happened to me. And it was. It was trauma for me to turn around and see the first thing I saw was the snake. And not even looking at how handsome the guy was. Maybe I should have seen the guy first, but I saw the snake first. And I screamed and I ran out of there. That hamburger place. So fast, I ran all the way, all the way to across the street. I wasn't thinking, I wasn't looking, and it was just a shock to my system. I mean, there was cars who had to stop because I wasn't looking. And that's what happens when we get into that shock system. I mean, it's like panic and we react, right? What happened was he came out and I was like, don't you come near me. And he's like, how bad can this be? He's my pet. And I'm going, that's not kind of a pet for you to come into a food place that not many people accept snake as a pet. We've seen dogs. We've seen, okay, some people come with their cats or other things. Even iguana, some people bring them, but snake in a food place? That's not the issue. I had to do some work and find out where my panic came from. So self-hypnosis, in a way, 
by practicing self-hypnosis, because I do that all the time to overcome pain, which I do for my dental work and everything else, I had to do that and find out where that trauma stems from because I wanted to know for me, not for anyone else, because I no longer wanted to go into that panic. So when I used to be a legal assistant, I was a paralegal, I got many years ago into 1990s. And at that time, this um, corporate, uh, how do you say, not sexual, uh, but you know, jokes and uh, having fun on behalf of someone else was not, uh, and even though it was negative, it was not a no-no. So I'm in my office working. I go to lunch, come back, and the attorney that was my partner, my boss's partner, loved to do practical jokes. And as I come back, sitting at my desk, ready to type away, I see the folders moved. I moved a folder. And can you imagine what I saw? Here's another panic stemming from that moment. The moment I moved the folders, here is the globe, and it was a clear globe and a snake's head just staring in my eyes. Panic galore. I flew from the ha I flew screaming bloody and just files over, ran out of the office all the way to the hallway. Why? Because the first thing I saw is the eyes, danger staring at me. You see, every aspect of some fears, panic that affects us has already had another timeline. And this is what we do at part of the hypnotherapy. Some people know it, the technique the modality that we use is called timeline therapy. That means it didn't start here, but let's go back to another time and a place and find out where it stemmed from. So my panic, it was not at the beach. It was not that snake. It was not even the time that it was at the law firm and him doing the practical oh. joke. But it was when I was a little girl, nine years old, and someone played a practical joke. And it was a friend of the family that they placed this uh, plastic snake in my bed that when I was a little girl, I went to go to sleep and I pulled the covers and I saw that snake and I screamed. Do you see do you see how it stems from some time ago the same as Brian picking up the cigarette the effect now that is my question to you I have healed through and I can watch something on Facebook about those Cambodian kids catching the snake and in my head it's not about the sneak anymore. It's about, wow, look at those kids and how um, brave they are. And they have learned the art of catching a snake because what are they going to do with it? Most probably they're going to take it to the village and someone older than them is going to take that snake and they're going to skin it and use that to sell it so that they can eat and survive and bring food to their table or to their village or to their family. In life, we do so many things. 
that it's for survival ship is for us that helps us even though it's negative today my question to you is do you still have a fear or something traumatic that has affected you when you were a little girl or a little boy that you have not realized that it's still affecting you today and if you recognize it are you ready to make that change and shift it and overcome that fear overcome that negative habit and live a healthier life for yourself first and foremost to honor to appreciate to accept and to love who you are to appreciate your health and if so I am here for you and if so I am here to help you heal within and the healing comes from the inside what I do through hypnosis and hypnotherapy is just relax you relax the body because at all times you hear everything that I say and that's why hypnotherapy works because you are more on that relaxed state as we do the therapy work and you are cognizant and yet relaxed it's like being tipsy you are aware and yet you are relaxed and if there is a change that you would like to make within yourself to heal within call me my name is Lisa Bubari and I am here to hear you to stand by you and guide you from the inside out it's time to evoke what was embrace what is and evolve to what it is that we want to become give me a call healwithin.com or you can always find me email me at Lisa B at healwithin.com. Thank you for all of you being here. And um, if you want to hear me speak this Saturday, I will be speaking at uh, Women and Wealth. If you are local, I will be in Sherman Oaks. Um, I will. I have a post on my face page and. Uh, RSVP give us a call I look forward to helping you guiding you or seeing you in person thank you until next week I bid you goodbye God bless <laughs>